Hi there, we're back at the roundhouse and just having thoughts as to how we keep American fire locomotives relevant in this day and age. I say it relevant because A.C. Gilbert, back some 60 years ago, made these locomotives with a headlight, a choo-choo sound, and they smoked, which was pretty good at the time, and you could, could make them go forward and backwards, albeit uh, a little awkward at times. Now I say reversing usually, but sometimes they just don't want to cooperate. Wouldn't it be nice if we could, just like every other model railroad, you could switch a button and it would change direction. Seems like a dream to a lot of American flyer runners. Okay, now I'm going to show you something that a lot of A.C. Gilbert American flyer railroaders don't seem to understand A.C. Gilbert did not necessarily mean that A.C. stood for alternating current. And it doesn't take much to run those slash AC locomotives and DC. Now this is not going to be a cut and splice. I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. A battery. Wires. Same locomotive, nothing's changed. Runs pretty good, doesn't it? Once you've converted your power supply, it doesn't take much to convert a locomotive for less than seven dollars each which is pretty economical when Gilbert was making American Flyer trains they didn't have these little devices which are pretty common now it's just a diode but it's like a stop sign for electricity basically you want to stop the flow in one direction you st stick one of these in and it, AC becomes DC in only one direction. And if you put them in a different pattern, you can make what is called a full wave rectifier, which means that the full differential on your wave becomes DC and it's a stronger voltage. Now, when you nowadays, yeah, you can buy them like this, or you can buy them in what is called a bridge, where it's essentially four of these stuck together. Now, if you take your transformer, you put your bridge, it's got two alternating symbols on it, you take your variable voltage to one side of the AC and you take your base 
to the other side and bingo, the bridge is marked positive and negative and it puts out DC current. If you go to a simple double pole switch like this and put a jumper all the way like this and one over to the other side, if you take the center out, it will now be a reversing polarity for your tracks. And if you want to make increase the strength of your transformer, you put in a capacitor. Now, capacitors actually hold on to voltage before they let it go, so it kind of becomes like a shock absorber for electricity. <coughs> now, they'll have a long length lead coming off and a short length lead. Connect the short length to the negative side and the, the long lead to the positive side and you're good to go. Um, you can get away with a, uh, something with 2200 microfarads and get it with a voltage of say 24 to 35 volts and that's all it takes. And so now, this is what it looks like. I've just used 2200 microfarads on this small transformer, but it would give a better smoothing of the wave if you used four of them in parallel for that same connection. Now, there's one more part to this conversion and that is for each of the locomotives you're going to require still another bridge and you have to install it so that your positive off of the bridge is going to one side of the field coil and the negative side of the bridge is going to the other side of the field coil. Gets a little confusing this next part where from one rail you're going to the AC symbol on one terminal of the bridge and the other side of the terminal you're going to one of the motor brushes and the other rail you're going to the second brush. That is the completion of what it takes to convert a locomotive. Your bridge is going to be replacing the reversing system that exists with the locomotive as you got it. Um, one thing I should make mention of is that when you place the bridge on the locomotive, you should epoxy it to, say, the body frame of the locomotive to increase its heat dissipation so that it doesn't just sit there and bake. Um, another thing that you will find is that you have to try and maintain, say, a positive forward motion on your locomotives. So if you find you've put it in a set it up and the positive side is reversing the locomotive, just unsolder the connections and reverse them here. Okay, now this is what the various installations on the locomotives will end up looking like. It's not rocket science, it's just basic soldering and gluing in place. Alternatively, you could skip the rectifiers and go directly to the newer CAN motors to get better performance 
as in DC CAN motors. Um, but that's up to you. I think the repairing the brushes on these Gilbert locomotives is a lot simpler than replacing the brushes on the CAN motors. But they do have very nice performance. Now, as you can see, I use a variety of different bridges. And when you're at this stage, you might be tempted to remove the tender weight to increase perhaps the pulling power of your locomotive. Don't do it. It keeps the tender on the tracks when you're going around those curves with the longer trains. Okay, now this is an example of a Gilbert train where we've replaced the AC Gilbert motor with the DC CAN motor. Um, gives great low end, low voltage performance. It's smooth, um, but those motors give off a fair bit of heat even compared to the AC Gilbert motors. So you need to put some foil inside plastic shell locomotives to protect them. Um, I don't recommend choosing one with the flywheel. It just doesn't seem to be necessary to get you any more greater realism than you're getting. And when it comes to a voltage once again, because these units draw such low voltage, invariably the smoke units don't get the voltage to heat up as well. So, all in all, it's an improvement, but there's some drawbacks there too. Now, the purist might not like these changes but they are all totally reversible and if you are considering going to the modern controllers where you could turn lights on and off independently and separate horns and such like that you're going to have to convert the locomotives to dc anyways so you can either go with these rectifiers dc motors get new controllers or buy new locomotives completely. It's all up to you. Just enjoy your railway. Thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, please hit that subscribe button.